It's always a relief to find that first London Loop sign of the day. We're back out here. So I nearly missed the first kind of turning onto the London Loop. So after you cross this road here, you see a London Loop sign there, well you probably can't, but it's on that little traffic island. But the way you have to go is you have to go along this brick wall and through that little gate there rather than stick to the footpath. Interesting. I've been away from the London Loop for far too long. I was last out here uh, in August, and today it's, uh, what is it today, the 7th of February, so that's quite a long break, isn't it? I've been looking forward to coming back for so long. Today's, I'm um, hoping to do two short sections. This first one is actually the shortest section on the London Loop, and it takes us from Yule to Banstead, and then we go from Banstead to Coulsdon, and that's about, I think it's about eight miles. I usually manage to make it about two miles longer, don't I, somehow? In fact, already here, I'm not sure whether to go around this amazing looking museum. Have a look at this. What an incredible space age building. This is Bourne Hall Museum. Looks like it's a bit of a community centre as well. Looks like it belongs in California or somewhere, doesn't it? And then we come out into this beautiful park here, Bourne Hall Park. How delightful. So I've already walked uh, 11 of the 24 sections on the London Loop. So after this one today, it'll be the halfway point for me. I started up in Enfield and uh, that was in January 2018. Because I'm doing the, uh, the London Loop anti-clockwise, all the directions are back to front for me. So I've printed out this um, this flyer, this map and directions from Transport for London website, but I kind of have to use it in conjunction with the Ordnance Survey map. We're on queue, look at this, perfect. We have a little London Loop information board. I've only seen, uh, I think, one or two others of these. There's one in Uxbridge Station. Here, look, London Loop, sections seven and eight. Well, I've done section eight. That was from Kingston. I did this bit. Back in, um, back in August, and that was a really delightful section. And you can see that was mostly along the Hogsmill River. So today I'm doing section, section seven. This grand white arch here must be from the original Bourne Hall, which uh, gives this park its name. You go through here and swing a right onto the high street. And this must be the continuation of the Hogsmill River. A really beautiful little watercourse, this. This is quite a fine old high street here. Unfortunately, we're looking into the sun, so you won't be able to see it too well, but... So this is the old jail. If you'd have a few too many beers and got yourself in a bit of trouble, this is where they threw you for the night. The old watch house here. Church Lane, it's a really delightful little street. This building here, the Well House, dates from 1700. Behind the trees there you see the old church tower, built in 1450. So I think the church tower is all that remains of the church. It. We have a, what I think is Yule Castle School. My guess is that that's a kind of Victorian folly. I've got to say, it's another glorious sunny day today. It's a hard frost this morning. But this sunshine is magnificent. The London Loop continues along Vicarage Lane. The uh, Transport for London information says that this is one of the least green sections of the London Loop, but. So far, it's been absolutely delightful, hasn't it? I know I've only walked a couple hundred yards. <laughs> um, I do remember one of the sections I did, sort of in the Uxbridge area, sort of around Heathrow. There are quite long sections of that where you were walking along busy roads. Actually, I think it was a section that came down to Kingston, I think. So, 
I'm not entirely sure why the directions for the London Loop only go in one way. Surely they must account for people <laughs> doing it in the opposite uh, in the opposite direction, but they don't. So we've got to get across this bypass without getting squashed. I am sort of slightly fascinated by the variety of London Loop signage and this is the first such sign that I've, I've seen on the London Loop. It's quite marvellous isn't it? And we come off the bypass and up a set of steps here and then up another set of steps marked with a bottle of booze at the top. We are now in Nonsuch Park, one of Henry VIII's many hunting grounds. I am uh, using a walking pole today. First time I've actually used a walking pole. Obviously I've picked up sticks to use as walking sticks. I've decided it's time to bring one of these with me to help deal with the, uh, the muddy ground. So apparently the name Nonsuch Palace comes from the fact that when it, the palace was built here by Henry VIII, it was, it was one of the most expensive palaces built in Europe, one of the most spectacular to the extent that there would be none such places here anywhere else in the world. That's the story anyway, whether it's true or not, I don't know. But it's a curious name. Um, just confronted the, the mud ahead of me. Some of you will be pleased to hear that following on from the comments about muddy boots and going to the pub after the walk on that uh, walk along the Chelmer, I have actually bought a pair of um, sort of like plimsolls with me, canvas shoes with me uh, to change into afterwards. So that was a great suggestion. Thank you very much for that. You, you know, I've never actually considered that in the past because of the extra weight of carrying a spare pair of shoes, but it makes a lot of sense. Wow, this is beautiful. So aside from a, a very grand palace that was here, Henry VIII also had a banqueting hall that was also um, a grandstand for watching the hunt. I imagine that would be a little bit like the, uh, the hunting lodge at Chingford, which we call Queen Elizabeth's hunting lodge. It was actually built by Henry VIII. I don't think anything remains of them. I think there might be some foundations somewhere in this park, but our path, I think, just takes us straight through and out the other side. So we've got some old stone slabs here, some columns, you see it there in the undergrowth. And then there's quite a curious studded metal box next to them. This is obviously the remains of something. So the stone pillars demarcate the, uh, the site of the palace, Nonsuch Palace. There you go, look, it tells us here. Built by Henry VIII and demolished in, six, uh, in 1682, I wonder why and excavated in uh, 1959. It's a beautiful avenue of trees. One of the things which is really wonderful and therapeutic about walking is the kind of free flow of thoughts, you know, lots of thoughts and associations drift through your mind. For some reason walking along here, I was thinking about the films of uh, an American filmmaker called Wilt Stillman, you know. When I was a student at City Poly, we studied a really lovely film called Metropolitan, a very unusual world of the kind of New York debutante scene, if you like. Really stuck with me. I don't know why I'm thinking of that walking through this park. So now we turn off the path and head this way, wherever this way is. So there's two concrete tracks here running through the trees. Apparently they were built here to service a housing development that was going to be built and then got abandoned due to the outbreak of the Second World War. So it's called, I think, this, I think it's literally called the Ghost Road. Across the site of Warren Farm, which is a 
a woodland trust site. So I think we go through the little tunnel here beneath the railway line and plunge into suburbia. such a walk. Borough of Epsom and Yule. Just going to walk down the road here. So I think we're going to hook a left here at this mini roundabout. Not going on to Dorking which is possibly the best named place in Britain. Whoa, interesting architecture here. This is a church would you believe. I do find that it's in the suburbs where you find some really interesting quite quirky, adventurous architecture. It's like they're trying to spruce the place up a bit, inject a bit of the avant-garde into the outlying suburbs. It's when you're walking down a street like this that you really appreciate the London Loop, as much as you do when you're walking across a beautiful open space like Nonsuch Park, because it's very unlikely I would have found myself walking down these streets if it weren't for the London Loop like quite a lot of it actually to be honest with you but this area around here on the sort of edge of London the Surrey fringe never really been on my radar to be perfectly honest so it's a real adventure you know the London Loop is brilliant I'll put a, a link below to a playlist of my other London Loop videos so we're turning off North the Avenue into this uh, side street I think it's called Cheyham Road or something then we need to turn left here. This street here is called Sandy Lane. Well, there's not a London Loop sign here, but my guess is that it must be this path that leads off the end of Sandy Lane. It seems to match the map. I'll double check, of course. Yeah, this is right. And what excites me down here? is that there are a, a series of tumuli here on the golf course, I think about four of them. Little burial mounds here. I think that bench over there looks like it's calling my name. I think I might have my, uh, my lunch sat there. Picked up a, a ham and cheese baguette from Pret in Waterloo Station. I've also got some fruit with me for this afternoon, a biscuit. Not a bad view for lunchtime. So here we are, Banstead Downs, and you can see there the Galley Hills tumuli. And that, I believe, is just down there. There are four mutilated barrows on the golf course, one of which is now used as a bunker, making it difficult to recognise. Two others are 12 metres in diameter and 1.5 metres high, each dimpled by a robber's pit on their summits. The fourth stands 0.6 metres high and 9 metres across. It too has been dug into, but no record of the contents has survived. From The Penguin Guide to Prehistoric England and Wales by James Dyer, published in 1981. So I wonder if these are the tumuli here. You can see the first one, I'll point there, the first one here, and there's a couple here. I'll see if I can find a date for them. I think the two Saxon burial mounds mentioned on the Historic England website are in the tree line there on the far side of the fairway. So we're just coming up to um, Banstead Station. I think this marks the end of section seven of the London Loop and is my halfway point in my walk around the London Loop. That's the 12th section that I've walked. But I'm just gonna carry on now and do the next section, section six, which is uh, not very long either. It's about four and a half miles. The descriptions of the route on the Transport for London maps are, are good. They are, they are useful, <laughs> that's for sure. They've certainly helped me out a number of times. But it's quite bewildering reading them backwards. <laughs> Because you're like, what? Um, you have to reverse all the directions 
and it's quite it's quite, it's quite confusing you definitely need to use them in conjunction with an ordnance survey map i would say Ooh, and some more fairly unique london loop signage i've not seen this before it's a bit like the, so the signage you see for the capital ring where it points out the distances further away look uxbridge lock 30 miles is it really 30 miles much wow that was a good walk Coulston is my next is the end of this section that i'm walking now so this road here the mad mile the london to brighton road that is some view back into london from here unfortunately the zoom isn't very long on my camera but that's stunning you can see the the towers around the shard and everything shimmering in the distance i'm never keen on crossing golf courses because i find navigation really difficult because obviously it's laid out in the order of the golf holes not for the footpaths easy to lose your way the golf course sitting on really high ground classic kind of burial mound territory and interestingly we're not that far away from the Roman Stain Street and you frequently find tumuli burial mounds earthworks along old roads so this would be a prime location nice flint just lying loose on the path Sometimes I like to take home stones like this that are found near um, burial mounds and near earthworks. A little trace of it, a remnant from the ground that you can take home. It transports you back through time, just through this simple stone. Sometimes it's really nice to go at just a kind of gentle pace. It's the advantage today of only really aiming to do about eight or nine miles, so I'm in no hurry. You can really sort of take in the surroundings a bit more than if you're trying to do big mileage in a day. Also, I've managed to somehow injure my left foot at some point during the week, so I've been in quite a lot of pain with it, so I have to kind of go relatively slowly. I couldn't resist coming out for a walk today, though. I was desperate for it. <laughs> there was no staying home, just to rest an injured foot. So now we go along Free Down Lane, which I believe takes us uh, up behind a prison. I'm not sure if the name is just coincidental or meant to be ironic. So I think... This is the outer wall of the prison here, according to the map anyway. What a great little footpath. You can already see how much the ground is starting to dry out now. It won't be long before it's spring, another month or so and we'll start to really feel like spring is on its way. Interesting place to find a great big lump of concrete here on this bank beside a field and look got some bits of metal that would have some sort of structure was on the top of here I wonder what that was I'm sure somebody will know in the comments I'm not sure if you can see it there in the undergrowth but there's more here as well another big lump of concrete there I wonder if it might be pylons but I'm not sure there was obviously buildings here once upon a time And for my London Loop walks in the previous two years is that I've, I've done one in January and then maybe February, March and then had a gap and gone out again mid-summer on the long evenings to get you know a couple of long sections done 
And then generally, I've not. <laughs> I don't tend to do them towards the end of the year, the last half of the year. I don't. I don't think uh, in 2018 and 2019 I didn't really do any after sort of July, August. So I'm not saying I'm going to repeat that pattern this year, but um, I'd like to sort of spread them out across the year. I probably won't finish it this year. I'm not going to aim to finish it this year anyway. So at the end of the lane here, luckily we don't cross that big busy road just yet. We, we hook a left down here to, to who knows where, I'm not sure. So I think this little bit of woodland here is on at the edge or running through uh, Oaks Park, which I believe it gives its name to the, the famous horse race, the Oaks. So it says on the TFL information anyway. Oh, what a really beautiful little surprise. You just come out through the trees into this lovely old 17th century garden here, the Oaks Garden. It's neat to life for some of the trees apparently date from the 15th and 16th century. This was a grotto that was part of the old ornamental gardens which stand on the site of an ancient grove. Ancient medieval grove anyway. Not one but two London Loop information boards in the same day. It shows us here Oaks Park. This is the continuation of the route down there. And this character here is Lord Derby, who uh, gave his name to the famous race, the Derby. Here it says, the most prestigious in the flat racing season. There you go. And more Great London Loop signage. Two and a half miles to Causton. That's where I'm going today. Wow. More sensational views back across London. Look at that. Right across the Thames Basin. So after we cross the road there, we go over this stile and walk along the edge of the field. This is the edge of a farm here. What a beautiful landscape. Nothing unusual to see there, just an old-fashioned red telephone box in the middle of a field. Makes you think that maybe they are used for time travel and the doctor's just landed there. It's just coming up to uh, 20 past three. Sunset today is at five, so it's quite nice now. After the dark winter evening, you're starting to get a little bit more light. Five o'clock sunset feels like a real treat. It seems to have come upon us quite suddenly. It's a little bit chillier now than it was earlier. It's positively warm at one point. So this is a lavender farm. Explains the red telephone box in the middle of the field. Carry on across this field here. Across this road, I think we're going up here. Here we go, away from the road. It's been a lot of open space on this section. It's been a real delight. This is Car Shorten Road Pastures, which is a bit of uh, chalk downland. This chalk pasture sits on the northern ridge of the North Downs. And now we follow this public right away towards a place called Clock House, which is actually the edge of my Ordnance Survey map. Look at this for a sun-kissed landscape. estate here with a parade of shops over there and a pub the Jack and Jill. I think we might be road walking it now till the end of this section. Some great views here in Grove Road looking across a deep valley. This is one of my favorite times of the year when you, you can feel that you're emerging from winter. And this is the last hour now of light when just a month ago it was dark by now. So this feels like a, feels like a real treat, like a real bonus. And there's an added glow to this uh, late winter sunset. A few things I like more than a suburban alleyway 
Here we go, got it in spades here. Over the railway line. We're homing in on the end of section six. So there we are, we can see uh, where it says, where it says Coulsdon Library. We are just, just above that and to the left. Pop an arrow in there. So you can see we've got a short distance now to the end of the section. Causeland's not a place I could say I've really heard of before. Looks like quite a, quite a nice little high street down there. Just making my way now to Causeland South Station, which is the end of the walk. What a brilliant walk it's been. It's so good to be back on the London Loop in 2020. Always, it always delivers the London Loop. It's been such a revelation and it continues to be so. Thank you so much for joining me on this walk. And uh, yeah, as ever, I really look forward to seeing you on the next one. Got some great stuff lined up, some real treats. See you then.